Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only hobo, Tom, and I have to make this quick because I have to get ready for work. I do apologize for getting this video kind of started late. Um, I just realized I had to clean up the house a lot, and I've been working a lot, so I haven't had a chance to take care of things that I should have taken care of. So, but for the most part, I'll give a little synopsis about what this week is, because this week is going to be rough. Um, again, hello and welcome, I am the one, the only, Hobo Tom. And let's get straight to the matter, let's talk about the dirty town, oh wait. I mean, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. It took place in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, Utah. It snows up there. It's January. It snows everywhere. They got there in the blizzard. Kudos to WWE for playing up that stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, show starts off with the Edge recap. Wow. That was some good stuff. What was even better, besides seeing the sign that my town is dirty, that was good. Randy Orton comes out to cut, cuts a promo, and I'm serious. For 15 minutes, oops, he gets booed. Said one sentence, looked at the mic. He was having a blast because that's what he misses. He misses coming out to a crowd. Boo! They were so loud, he couldn't get a word in the edgewise. That was amazing. Uh, again, a good 15 minutes of being booed. You could almost tell he couldn't keep a straight face because he would look down and, and kind of hide his face. And you know he had the biggest smile. It's like, this is going to be the match of the year at WrestleMania. That's always good to see. A motivated Randy Orton. I almost don't know if there's anyone better. The problem with Randy Orton is that sometimes he tends to phone it in. So, Randy Orton, you have the two extremes. Amazing Randy Orton. Phone checked out Randy Orton. He's actually been really into things recently, which is good. Maybe it's the older Randy Orton that kind of like phone stuff in, but who knows. Uh, after that, we had a Liv versus Lana match, and and wow, that was terrible. Lana comes out. She, it, Lana's a great talker. I'll give her that. She should just be a mouthpiece for people. You want a little bit? Make sure I don't run over any cattails. That would be very. Uh, then let's see. Okay, there's my notes again. Uh, so it's really quick. Liv's there. Um, I'll say this match was three minutes long. No way it was five minutes. I just know Lana got in a quick kick, and then Liv hit a code breaker, second rope, flatliner. Liv Morgan wins again. <sighs> Can of soup. Then Ruby Wright comes out. Ruby Wright and turns on Liv. She did this also in NXT when Ruby Wright actually turned on Dakota Kai. Heidi Lovelace, you're bad, bad. Maybe she was upset that her boyfriend, Matt Cross, didn't get the NWA TV title. Who knows? And I, uh, oh, I'll get to that later. Then the next match um, was Mojo Rally versus Drew McIntyre. Drew. Drew cuts, Drew cuts a promo. Says, listen, three seconds after I drop this mic, I'm going to claim or kick you. That's it. Guess what happened? Drew McIntyre cut his promo, put Mike down. Mojo Rally charged into Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre charged into Mojo Rally. Drew McIntyre hit the Claymore kick. One, two, three. Ah, it was okay. Actually, it was terrible. I mean, this is Mojo Rawley, the 24-7 champion. I mean, Drew could have even teased something with a 24-7 title. I don't know. It's They're building Drew to be the monster, which is good. But at the expense of Mojo Rawley? Not good. This is a can of soup.
Then we had a Seth Rollins promo. Yeah, whatever. Uh, he has a Monday Night Messiah shirt. They, they have some weird... I just realized they have the Almighty and the Monday Night Messiah. Indeed. I know, you'll get some outside time. Oh, you saw my cat sneak in the room. Uh, she just wants to go outside because it's actually sunny outside for a change. Uh, so next match, we have a shuffle threat, a six-man... I'm sorry, a six-man elimination match between Kevin Owens and the Viking Raiders taking on Buddy Murphy and the Authors of Pain. Uh, for the most part, Buddy... Buddy Murphy gets beat up by Kevin Owens and Ivar beats up Buddy Murphy. Eventually, Ted, then it's Razor and, and Ivan. Oh, this is almost... A War Machine, Gorillas of Destinies type match. Except for you have Razar instead of Tama Tonga. This could have been a lot better than, than it was. But it was still actually pretty good. Uh, Eric got isolated for a while. Um, until, he's, until, he hit, until he dropped AOP with some knee strikes. Again, whenever you're wrestling, a bigger guy, you always don't want to take their legs out. Classic mantra of that. Then they did the Viking dive. Because <laughs> both members of Authors of Pain were outside. They did the Viking dive. KO's just like there. What should I do? Just standing in the corner. It was kind of funny. Uh, Ivar wrecked the LED and also wrecked his shoulder. Ouch. I've dislocated my shoulder twice. But it's not something you want to do. The reason I'm hunched over is cats being a pest. And she just wants to get like all cats. And there she goes, kind of staring. But we'll see. So Ivar was done. Medical staff said no. Can't go over there. Um, Eric got eliminated. And that means there's only Kevin Owens versus three people. One, three. I could, do you want to come up here? Say hi to everyone. Being pesty, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't go any back further. So let's see. Oh, there we go. Uh, then where was I? Yeah, Buddy Murphy potentially hit by a fallaway slam from Kevin Owens. And Buddy Murphy got that spike DDT. Whoa. Was that a spike eventually? So Eric got eliminated first, and Ivar, then Buddy Murphy. Uh, then. Aikum got cannonballed. And he actually got a, he actually got Kevin Owens in the pop up power bomb. Uh, Kevin Owens actually pop up managed to pop up power bomb him. That was amazing. Uh Aikum got eliminated, but then Razor did a pop up spine buster. That was actually pretty good, wasn't it? And Razor won after his little pep talk. This was actually pretty fun. This was, for the most part, a cheeseburger match. What was that? It was, it was a what match? It was a catnip match. What do you mean catnip match? You see, you're just being fluffy now. You know what I say, fluffy? Cheese, but you can't keep on giving giving them the middle claw. I, I'll, I'll, I'll never get monetized. Cat keeps on giving you my YouTube audience the middle claw. That's not good. Then we had a uh, Ricochet interview, and wow. Ricochet has to go back to promo 101. That was terrible. Oh! Hi, Grandma Barb! No idea who you are, but you have a sign, therefore I shall acknowledge you. Then we had Alistair Black versus Eric Young, and this is good because Eric Young gets definitely more offense in out of any other job or opponent that Alistair Black has had until Alistair Black hit the foot sweep, and there was just a striking of Alistair Black and Black Mass. And that was it. But the good news is Eric Young got, got his offense in. It's good to see Eric Young on TV. I miss sanity. But Alistair Black cut a promo. For the most part of this match, yeah, ham sandwich.
And then Umberto Canino comes out for a match. And his opponent, oh, wow. Probably the two most dashing men in all of wrestling now. Umberto being one, but Angel Garza, his cousin, came out. A company to the ring by Selena Vega. Wow, at least Garza speaks. <laughs> he he shows a lot more personality. He's a lot more bubbly than, say, Andrade is. Whereas Andrade, he's very passionate. But when Zelina speaks, he just doesn't say anything. As Zelina Vega was talking, Angel Garza's like, yep, that's, see, hey, mi hermano, mi, prima, mi primero. I don't know. I, I think I called brother and cousin the same thing there. My Spanish is terrible. I apologize. But <laughs> then he then he has the cadence to get what he could almost tell he was enjoying himself. Uh, there was no match, however, for poor Umberto because Angel Garza just destroyed his cousin. He said, You are an embarrassment to me, familia. And the king's just dirty. Talking about Selena Vega like that. And. Oh, yes. And the, the, all the people in Salt Lake City, full of Mormons, were, were chanting, C, C, C. When did Mormons learn Spanish? Indeed. Uh, Selena Vega looked actually a lot better. She, she was wearing a dress instead of some figure skater outfit, so that's good. She looks hotter, huh? Hot! Caliente! We me caliente. And fuego! Uh, then, so, Angel Garza was going to deliver the Angel Clipper to his cousin onto the concrete, but then the Rey Mysterio Jr. Ole, 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 ole. That was awesome. Stop! It's lucha time. I still don't know why people don't like lucha, lucha style wrestling. I don't know. But, um, Angel Garza went to charge Rey Mysterio. Oh, actually, Rey Mysterio went to charge Angel Garza. He went, ole! Angel Garza's pock full of personality. That's. He did get the personality. This almost felt like a Eddie Guerrero and Chavo Guerrero Jr. match, which is good. And actually, if that's what it leads up to with Umberto versus Angel Garza in like an Eddie versus Chavo match, ooh, with that feel, that would be amazing. I hope that does happen, especially... I don't know, they, they, they could do it at the Super Showdown. I don't want it. More so at WrestleMania. That would be a good pre-show match. Be a quality pre-show match. Uh, let's see here. Yep, a whole bunch of moves. Back and forth. Again, the chain wrestling is amazing. The pants come off and get tossed. Ole! But Pence come off, get tossed into the face of Rey Mysterio Jr. as a distraction. And they mention the fact that Hector Garza team with Rey Mysterio in the old days of WCW. I like that history fact. That's pretty cool. I think Hector Garza is the uncle of Umberto Carrero and the father of Angel Garza. Then, let's see. That was just a... F I wonder... You know what would be also a pretty big money match? A Cabela. I know I'm saying that wrong. Versus Mascarita match. Which is a hair versus mask match. Angel Garza's hair versus the mask of Rey Mysterio. That would be interesting, too. Again, all along the lines of Eddie and Chavo. Anything they do referencing Eddie and Chavo... Then uh, there was a second row moonsault, which missed. That was so cool. Then Rey Mysterio, the Lucha Destroyer. 
Uh, Selena Vega saved Angel from the 619. Uh, Rey Mysterio hit, got hit by a DDT because they just brought outside. It was a double count up. It was a death to finish, baby. No be wheel. This is a good math because Ray got, Ray got DDT on the concrete. So this is a tough and tough match. Charles Flair, woo! Comes out, gives a promo. Rhea Ripley comes out. I, I, I've i heard about this, but Rhea Ripley is like the female version of Pete Dunne. Then the next match was Asuka versus Natalia. Uh, Natalia. I like this. Natalia busted out some classic moves. And I don't know what happened this match, but you could hear Natalia was upset about something. They were stiff in this match. Asuka legitimately kicked Natalia in the face. Oh, he's like, you want to shoot? You just want to have a fight? That was a weird match. It was actually pretty cool, though. Uh, again, Asuka just kicked Natalia straight in the face. Nothing simple about that. Uh, what was it? Yeah, Asuka's, Asuka's looking pretty cool. And Kairi Sane looks like a member of the Akatsuki from Naruto. I just realized that. The way she wears the belt around her neck kind of hides her face. Kairi Sane's still amazing. And then there was an exchange of forearm. Of course, Natalia hit the discus, Larry, the discus elbow. Um, when, and of course, Kairi Sane interfered, Natalia was against the ropes, Kairi Sane got her attention, that allowed Asuka to put the Asuka lock in, I'll tell you what, these two don't like each other, because there was that little extra kick at the end, when she let go, and she was about ready to, she was about ready to lock up that Asuka lock and turn it into something worse, and, and she gave Natalia that extra kick. Stanky kick. It's like, yeah, I could beat you in a shoot too. Uh, this match it was actually fun. I want to upgrade this match. This was a cheeseburger match. Then Asuka comes out. She wants to take Becky Lynch again. Becky says, good, let's go. I, I, I wanted to see Natalia get misted. But, oh well. And for some reason, the promos on the show awful. Though. With the exception of Randy Orton, Randy Orton was the best. Everything after Randy Orton was terrible. Then, in the main event of the evening, you have Seth Rollins taking on Ricochet, taking on Bobby Lashley to challenge Brock Lesnar at Super Showdowns. Huh. For the most part, Lashley lets Seth and Ricochet beat each other up for a while. He just kind of hangs out the outside. Again, this he he was talking. It's like the, the Monday Night Messiah was getting because he cut a promo with Ricochet. It's like you don't let them crucify you the way they crucified me. The Monday Night Messiah and the Almighty. Here are some funky Christian overtones I hear coming from WWE. I guess some Mormons are pretty religious. I don't know. I don't know if it's for this. If they if they continue this thread, it's, it's going to be kind of creepy, though. Ugh. Uh, I mean, uh, then, of course, Ricochet, he decides to fly on top of everyone. And then it's everyone into the pool. Uh, the architects of pain show up. Buddy Murphy shows up. Kevin Owen shows up. Eric from the Viking Raiders shows up. Just beats up everyone. There's chairs involved. Eventually, Kevin Owens and Eric take care of the authors of pain and Buddy Murphy. Uh, Lashley. Man, he's just so huge. Uh, 
who was it? Lashley barely got Ricochet up. He just lost his balance. There was a great Tower of Doom spot. Always fun to see. And all this, though. Wow. Ricochet hit the 630? Ricochet won? Whoa, I did not see this happening. And because of all the running stuff, it kind of detracted from it. Again, once he got into the, the really Christian stuff, I'm a Monday Night Messiah. I got crucified by this crowd, and I'm fighting the Almighty. I'm like, wait a second. If CrossFit Jesus. Because remember, back when wrestling was bad, God was actually Shawn Michaels' partner in a tag team match. Didn't work back then. Not going to work. And then Brock runs in. Rex Ricochet leaves and screams. Actually, I just saw Brock run in. Rex Ricochet get out of the ring. And then it was a hard out. This match actually was kind of fun. It's a cheeseburger match. And that was Raw. That was a really weird Raw. The bad was god awful. The good was okay. This Raw earned itself a ham sandwich. That was Raw in a nutshell. Um, so this is a really weird week. Because I have to work a lot, and next week I work a lot, so I'm going to get these shows in. I know I'm going to do my Monday show, because that's always the easy show. Um, I cannot cover Impact tonight. I have to work. I might catch... I don't know. I have to see when the Impact replays on tomorrow. I'm sure I can do that later. Um. I might do Impact. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Wednesday I work. So I'll probably put the AEW. So for sure, I'll get the AEW and NWA recap up by Thursday. Friday will SmackDown. No 205. So I have to go kind of right to sleep because I have to get to work the next morning. Saturday, Sunday, there's nothing. Monday's next Monday next week, uh, Monday Night Raw, typical. Then I have to see the rest of the schedule. And I'm not too sure if I'll be able to do SmackDown. Although we'll see. It depends a lot on... How long them races take? Because, ooh, woo, boy, I like me some cars driving in a circle. 